serious topic, but something that anyone who has a pet will likely have to deal with. The loss of a pet can cause major grief for the owner, but what about other pets in the house? Here to talk about pets and grief is our pet expert, Dr. Eric Rulin from St. Paul Pet Hospital. Good morning, nice everybody. To have you here, as yeah. always. Happy Monday. Yeah. So. Okay, um, let's talk about, we, we know recently one of our coworkers had two dogs and, and recently lost one of them. So it, let's kind of delve into what to look for in the other dog or dogs yeah. or other pets. As far as grief, what kind of um, you know, symptoms can we look for? You know, this is a, a really, really good topic because uh, although it's not super, you know, this is not a bright you know, Monday morning topic to start out with, but we see it a lot, you know, and as, as one of the services that we provide at St. Paul Pet Hospital, a, a lot at home, euthanasia services and, and mm -hmm. you know, families saying goodbye to their pets, a lot of times I'm coming into situations and I do these you know, one or two of them a day, I'll go in and there's another dog there at the house. And yeah. we know from studies that 86% of dogs show some signs of behavioral changes. And we don't, we don't know necessarily if that is associated with grief, but we do know that we can see um, the signs. And, the, and it's usually seeking behaviors. Um, so a lot of times they'll stare out a window looking at, you know, looking for their housemate. They, a lot of dogs don't conceptualize death. And I, and I don't mean to say that collies are necessarily super intelligent or smart, but there definitely are some breeds that are that are have more cognitive ability. Mm -hmm. We can see that there's a little bit more that they can rationalize a little bit more, but they don't necessarily have that conceptualization of death. I, I would like to believe as as a human and as a pet owner that they that they do recognize it, but we. There's a, that's a hard way to quantify. There's a, it's really hard to quantify that, sure. that information. Well, so. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. Obviously, unfortunately, both, have, right. both of us have mm -hmm. been through the loss of a pet. A lot of probably viewers have too. As a human, it hurts. And it is a, it is a, a, a space that is gone. And mm -hmm. I would imagine if you are another, you, you've gotten used to having your buddy around so and that's they're not really, there. That's a really, so there's two points that you make there, Kelly. There's one of them is, it really depends a little bit on how bonded, obviously, the pet is sure. to the other pet in the household. My old two dogs that I had, I used to have a Whippet and then Maverick, my old lab, they didn't really like each other. Mm -hmm. And when Bombay died, Maverick's life actually got a little bit better. He mm -hmm. actually was a, a lot more outgoing, um, which was kind of interesting. But I know that Leia, who had, is, is essentially Butter's housemate, they're bonded, and they would, they would, it, there would definitely be some behavioral adjustments. The second thing that you brought up was really important. Dogs pick up on a lot of our behavior too. So it's not just a mm -hmm. pet losing another pet in the household; it's a family member actually dying. You know, the, the sure. human counterpart's sure. dying, and these dogs are going to go through an adjustment period. So I think that's kind of a good segue for us to talk about. Okay, like recognizing some of these signs yeah. again, the anxiety. I didn't mention so much about um, nutritional um, and eating and drinking habits. A lot of these dogs are very stressed out. Cortisol levels are high, and what happens when we're stressed out, we usually don't eat. Some of these dogs that are really, really bonded, we might have to actually intervene with some either anti-nausea medications, or sometimes uh, a lot of clinicians will actually prescribe these dogs antidepressants for a couple weeks. Hmm. Uh, Short-term trazodone. Um, sometimes these dogs may have to go on something like fluoxetine or Prozac for three to four to five months to get them through that. Wow. On a really bonded dog, sure, a sure, very yeah, bonded sure. Dog. Yeah. yeah, and we know a lot of do, you know yeah. animals bond together. Sometimes it can be a dog and a cat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when uh, you know an animal passes and you have more than one in the house, a lot of people might feel you know they need to not only replace that animal for it themselves, but also for yeah. the dog who is showing some of those signs of grief. Hold off on that for at least four months. Okay. Four months. So I, I would say wait four to five months and if that pet is still not adjusted, because they normally will after two months, they'll get back to sort of normal again. Um, so I, I, would, I, I guess we did kind of skip over some of the top, you know, some of the ideas for how do we manage, like what, when they're going through some of this, what are some them. good day-to-day -day things that we mm -hmm. should be doing? The biggest thing is a lot of us have dealt with grief in our way, you know, breaking up with a significant other, um, death of a close family member. Keeping your brain and your body active in that time is really, really important. And I see a lot of times these dogs are sitting at home with anxious minds and they're just spinning. So uh, like a lot of things that we treat and like a lot of my, you know, a lot of my points that I'll give to our viewers and to my, my uh, clients, keep, keep these dogs super, super active and keep their brains you know, engaged. Hide peanut butter and treats at home if you can. Let them, don't let them fester and you don't want to be thinking about your significant other, you know, like sure, all day long. Sure, you gotta like, sure. you gotta do something different. So do that, keep them engaged. More visits probably with some of the playmates from around the neighborhood or going to the dog park more often so that they can establish some new bonds and start to start to make some new memories, you know? 
So, so what if you get to that point where you're thinking, okay, it's time maybe to add another uh, another pet yeah. to the mix? Um, you think about four to five months. Obviously, it's case by case. But yeah. um, how how do you how do you do that? You probably don't just show up one day. Or maybe you do. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you, you may want to. You obviously want to have. You want to be watching the interaction. You mm -hmm. know, in a closed space that you can intervene quickly. Typically, do, the body behavior, you know, body language of the dog. You guys, most of us can mm -hmm. tell. Um, but you just want to do that in an observed space, or in a space, or in at least in a space that one dog can kind of get away from each other, and they can just. This is a very neutral. You want to have actually a neutral environment. I didn't mention that. So a neutral environment is big enough that they can get away, but still small enough that you can still kind of intervene. Um, if that makes sense at all. Yeah. Uh, but um, what about, um, so my dog just had had a litter of puppies yeah. uh, and, and she was in a shelter. And she, you can still, still tell that she clearly just had puppies. Right. Do dogs go through that kind of grief when the puppies are obviously were adopted by some other people? Moms in want their shelter? puppies to go home. They, want, they right. want, It's like sending kids off to college. They're like, we're like, we we need to get You've you. You've been fed. Yes, for you're fed. They're weaned, now. they're weaned now. That's a natural process that's going to happen in the wild. Sometimes, you know, a lot of like, you know, wolf pups will stay with their mothers longer. But there, there's a sh very short adjustment period. But they actually okay. don't mind. There, when you watch. Pup, moms with puppies, they will get away from the from the litter for a while. They're just like, I need some mom <laughs> time, like, like right now. Just like like, us. I'm outside, <laughs> just like taking a vacation. Sun. And I'm Le out. Yeah, leave me alone. So it's not that's very that's a very different you know situation because they were you know most most of these whelping mothers are are ready to yeah. move sure. forward. So. Quick question for you: If you are introducing a new a new dog, we're obviously we're focusing on dogs. Does it make sense for that dog to be younger, older? Does it matter? Doesn't really. Okay. Matter. Younger, younger, younger. Pups are just more malleable. They're sure. just, they're, just mm -hmm. more, okay. they're more willing to you know jump into new situations. Right, so, right. So. Dr. Right. Eric, so good stuff. I do yeah. want to give a shout out. It's Earth Day on Friday, and St. Paul Pet Hospital is hosting uh, the river cleanup on the Mississippi River at the Hidden Falls, uh, the Hidden Falls Park oh. in St. Paul. Oh, yeah. So come down if you want to help us clean up the river. It's our greatest natural resource. We're there with Bob Mitchell's Fly Shop and the Hive Collaborative. So I am uh, I'm super pumped for this event. It's gonna be really fun. Yeah, we can tell. You guys right. know I'm an avid av 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 fisherman, lover of the river. And the we dog are. park's close by. So and there the you go dog too. park's literally across the river. Yeah, so, so we'll be cleaning up the dog. Yes, we'll be cleaning up the dog park too. That's a really good awesome. point, Kelly. So we'll be up and down the river on both sides. Yeah. Okay.